Mm -hmm. And our sixth topic today is simply this. I, again, I told the story at the beginning as we had our Star Wars role playing uh, group coming together. A buddy of mine came through the door. It goes, hey, just announced Kevin Feige. If you guys didn't hear, Kevin Feige is going to be producing a Star Wars movie. Now, this is not some lame little rumor. This comes from Alan Horn himself. Alan Horn said the following, and this was to The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, we are excited about the projects Kathy and Lucasfilm are working on, not only in terms of Star Wars, but also Indiana Jones and reaching in, into other parts of the company, including Children of Blood and Bone with Emma Watson Fox. With the close of the Skywalker saga, Kathy is pursuing a new era in Star Wars storytelling, and knowing what a diehard fan Kevin is, it made sense for these two extraordinary producers to work on a Star Wars film together and like we've been telling people for a long time make no mistake yeah kevin kevin feige is a massive massive and has been his whole life massive marvel fan but his heart belongs to star wars and we've we've been telling you that for a long time kevin feige is a massive marvel fan always has been but his heart belongs to star wars now let's address a couple of things here off the top before i get into my uh big geek gasms about the fact that he's going to be producing a <laughs> star wars film number one um, I have been saying for some time, you know, what does this mean? I've been saying for some time that Kevin Feige is not going to be the president of Marvel for much longer. Now, by much longer, I don't mean several weeks, but I think three to four years from now, he's no longer the president of Marvel. He's gone. He has done everything he can do at Marvel. He has accomplished every goal. He has climbed every mountain to the point now that he's got comic book films being nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards, and he now has the most, the biggest box office film of all time. There is no other mountain he can climb that is bigger than the mountains he's already climbed there at Marvel. He's got other things to do. One of the things that some people have suggested that maybe he could do is because everybody knows in the business of his love for Star Wars is to go over and take over Star Wars. So it's not surprising that we're seeing a lot of people online saying things like this is the harbinger of the eventual announcement that Kevin Feige is taking over Star Wars. And I'm going to tell you this up front. I don't believe that's the case because in career terminology, that's a lateral move. You know, he'll be going from running Marvel to running Star Wars. It's a lateral move. And I now I can maybe see him jumping from Marvel over to Warner Brothers and, you know, bringing DC to prominence because that would forever etch him in Mount Olympus of movie iconography. I mean, he would be the man forever and ever. Amen. That's what he would be if they decided if he decided to do that. I believe, and I've said this for a while, I believe, and I don't know this, nobody's told me this, I believe that Lucas or that Disney is grooming him to ultimately take over for Alan Horn, who was brought out of retirement years ago by, by Bob Iger to run their movie division, but at some point he's going to want to retire again. And I think they're positioning Kevin Feige to take over Alan Horn's job, not make a lateral move to Star Wars. But if you're Kevin Feige and you're at Disney... You have earned the right to do anything you want to do there. And if in his heart, he wants to do a Star Wars movie, and he's now, according to the articles, it says he went to Kathy Kennedy a number of months ago and made a pitch for an idea for a movie. Kennedy loved it. They decided they're going to work on this together. And they're going to make it. So this has actually been a thing for a while. We've just not known about it. So I don't see this as the future path of Kevin Feige. I don't see him ultimately taking over Star Wars because that's something he would have wanted to do years ago. But now I think he's got bigger fish to fry uh, higher up. But while he's there, he wants to do a Star Wars movie. He wants to put his thumbprint and become a part of, you know, the greatest name in, in movie entertainment ever. Star Wars. He wants to be a part of that. And if you're Disney, you let him do whatever the F he wants to do. And so that's what I see going on there. Now, moving on to the geeky part of me about Kevin Feige doing a Star Wars film. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, you guys, know, look, what this guy has done with the MCU, not just with the MCU, but with the comic book genre in general. This guy's put out nearly 23 films, almost averaging a billion dollars per Film that is mathematically inconceivable to quote Vincini inconceivable. 
It's absolutely inconceivable. Couldn't pot you can't possibly make a 20 plus film franchise an average of billion dollars. Are you crazy? And yet that's what he's done. And he's done it with character. He's done it with creativity. He's done it with imagination. He's done it by genre bending. He's done it in every way imaginable. He has done it with the MCU and done it with great success. For him to bring that imagination, that creativity, and that passion that he has for Star Wars, and to bring that into the Star Wars universe, oh my God, this is great. Now, I don't think he's going to make eight films of Star Wars. I think he's probably going to make one or two when it's all said and done, and that's fine. I'll just be super grateful for that, and then he'll probably take over Alan Horn's job. Again, I don't know that. I'm, I'm just speculating and guessing, but still, this is fan-fucking-tastic. I am so excited about this. I think it's wonderful and marvelous to see Kevin Feige play in the Star Wars universe is just outstanding. And uh, I'm really dying to see what they're going to do with this. Aaron, I I'm just curious. Like, you're not as big of a Star Wars fan as me, clearly. Really? Uh, maybe I should have invited your <laughs> husband. Maybe I should have invited Tom to come down and talk with me here today. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you, you, you would never get him to shut up about it. Tom Absolutely. is all about Star Wars. But still, like, look, Kevin Feige has become the most successful producer in Hollywood history. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just at the, he's not even 50 and he is the most successful producer in Hollywood history to have him come into something like Star Wars. Uh, put this into perspective for us. So what, what does this mean? Well, you know, what I think, what I see here is it kind of goes back in a, in a not same scale, but similarly to what I just said about John Krasinski, I love when you have someone that comes into the world that we live in, which yes, I know that Rob's favorite saying is it's not show friends, it's show business. But at the same time, it's also, I mean, I grew up watching Preston Sturges films and films, you know, with Marilyn Monroe and Betty Davis. So I naturally gravitate towards certain types of roles. And I am always thrilled when I have the opportunity to play in the world that I grew up dreaming about. So when I hear that Kevin Feige, who has been a fan since before he was a filmmaker, that he now gets to live out his boyhood dream of actually putting his fingers into the Star Wars franchise um, after the massive success that he already has, it's it's it, it actually warms my heart. It makes me so happy because you know that this is someone who is going to make decisions out of love, out of care, out of compassion, not just out of a paycheck, not just out of what the studio wants to do, whatever, what the da da da. Like this is someone who is going to take it seriously and cherish this project with the love um, and the affection that it so deserves. And it, it makes me, it, it warms my heart. And it's also great to see someone like Kevin Feige, who, as you said, is so young, who's saying, you know what? It's my world, and I want to do what I want to do, and I want to have fun, and I want to create great projects that people are going to enjoy, that I'm also going to enjoy doing. Because the more fun that Kevin Feige has creating, you know, putting his stamp on these projects um, and these franchises that have such a huge worldwide following, the more the audience is going to enjoy it as well. I think it's fantastic. This, this to me is absolutely fantastic news. Chris, I'm just curious, like you heard you heard this when you showed up for the game last night. Yeah. So you showed up for the game, got got word from it. What are you thinking and, and what's, what are you sensing from the online world as you're seeing people talk about it online as well? Oh, online it seems like everyone is so fired up about this. And I was last night too. I mean, at the game we were talking about this. What do you do after Endgame? Mm. You do a Star Wars movie, <laughs> come on. Uh, and let's be clear too, guys. I mean, Kathleen Kennedy still does have two years left on her contract she's not going anywhere that she for, just got an extension yeah for. and so she's not leaving because i've seen that in the comments of her getting booted or something no she's not she's kicking around she's gonna hang out for a while but i mean we've seen feige do masterful work with creating an entire cinematic universe and really weaving stories throughout multiple films and to be able to do that with star wars for a new trilogy or a new set of stories that exist in that universe i am so thrilled to see him do that because when fans get a hold of stuff that they truly truly love it usually pays off i'm pumped yeah, I, I'm, I'm very excited about this, and it'll be really neat to see what kind of direction they decide to go. And then, of course, timeline. I mean, clear, we're not going to see a Kevin Feige produced film for exactly. a number of years. It's going to be a while before we see that. But still, I, I am very, very I interested to see. Yes. Um, 
forgive my ignorance on this, but are we still having, are we still talking about Quentin Tarantino directing a Star Wars film? No, no, that was Star Trek. Yeah. Are those Star not the same Trek. thing? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I just had to Oh my gosh. You just gave John an aneurysm. Face, John. Oh my God. You broke his brain. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my so god. Do you think that I'm back, actually going to pass that I'm, opportunity yeah. up? I'm hyperventilating. That, I'm hyperventilating. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I shouldn't mess with your health like that. Troll <laughs> level nine thousand. Yeah. You you got me. Every once in a while, like, I gotta get a little oh dig goodness. in. I'm sneaky. <laughs> get the hell out. No, I'm wow. <laughs> you know, and I I'm, leave you with this. Oh my my god. Now I'm off to Atlanta. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Um, let, uh, I'm, I'm Should I gonna, do my Texan golem again? Is, my precious. I just, I just whew. okay. I'm gonna take a second to have to, <laughs> to recover from that. Okay, listen. This is a big deal. It's such a big deal that I decided we needed to make this the topic of today's question of the day. I needed to know how you guys are feeling about this. So here was our question of the day. I, I put this up actually late last night just to get you guys uh, to give you guys a head start on it. And the question of the day was simply this. Are you excited that Kevin Feige is producing a Star Wars movie? Your three options were yes, fuck yes, and I'm touching myself yes. 41% of you have said yes, you're excited about it. Uh, 27% of you in the minority are saying fuck yes, and 32% of you are saying uh, you are touching yourselves so much yes. So that is how you guys are feeling about it. I concur, by the way, with... All three. There is no wrong answer there. There is no wrong answer on today's question of the day. 32%. A bunch of you are lying. <laughs> yeah, it's more than that. That's a much higher number. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's just, you know, but, you know, they had people around them when they were answering the question. I mean, that, I just think it's tremendously exciting. Now, one of the things I should mention, too, uh, something some people have brought up, and this is worth mentioning, is, you know, when this when Disney screwed up the deal with Sony and it crapped all over the Spider-Man deal and kicked Spider-Man out of the MCU. One of the things that Sony said was that, hey, you know, we get it. Kevin Feige's busy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, obviously, that was never, it was not just about Kevin Feige being busy. This was all about Disney trying to throw their weight around and wanting everybody to bend over for them. And when Sony wouldn't, they, they screwed up the deal and they botched it. Still, that said, a lot of people have been asking the question, you know, how much can one guy do? Because we've got, over the next two years, we have... 10 MCU projects just in the next two years. 10 that they talked about five feature films, five thing, five series on Disney Plus. And then beyond that, we've got Doctor Strange 2. We've got whatever new Avengers they're going to do. We got Black Panther 2. We've got they're going to be incorporating X-Men and Fantastic Four at some point down the line, blah, blah. How much time does Kevin Feige have? I believe that this move suggests this. I believe Kevin Feige is starting to delegate more. And because I've told this story before, guys, a couple of years ago, I was doing, uh, I got to moderate the uh, Avengers uh, Age of Ultron press conference and I got to be the moderator there and I got together with Kevin Feige a few minutes before we started and he was like exhausted. I'm like, what's going on? He goes, he goes, listen, I, he just got off a golf cart and he's like, my day has been this. Uh, conference call about a script on this movie for like three hours. Then I had to rush over to this viewing room to give approval and give final notes on the Ant-Man trailer. And then I had to go over here and do this. And then, like, he's constantly moving. It's like, and that was when the MCU was just doing like two or three things a year. Yeah. I think he is starting to delegate his stuff out. It, it has to be. He has to be at the point where he's starting to delegate stuff out and to going to a higher level view of just giving general oversight to everything, making sure everything stays untouched, but delegating more things down below the line, which again could be pointing towards his eventual departure from the role at the same time. But busy man, let me ask you this quick, Aaron. Do you think him taking on so much? And I know this is one of the concerns of some people. Do you think him taking on so much could cause the quality of the upcoming MCU stuff whenever you know, when you take on too much, things get done less well. Are we in danger of seeing that happen here with Kevin Feige? No. And here's why. Uh, you're absolutely right. When, in the beginning, when there weren't as many projects going on, that's the time that Kevin Feige is trying out this cinematographer, this writer, this production designer, this wardrobe designer. You know, he, they're... 
when Kevin Feige is figuring out who are the people who are the best of the best for this world? Who are the department heads that I know I can count on, that I have a shorthand of communication with, that they know what I want before I even want it? Those, like all of that, he's basically been planting the seeds for his ability to then rise up. Like he's not going to take on more than he can handle. And the reason why he can handle this many projects is because, as you said, he's delegated and he knows that he has people that he can trust. Um, you know, it's the same thing with any major company. I mean, he's rise, he's risen up to be the CEO of a massive corporation. I mean, the Walton kids don't walk into every Walmart and go, hey, who's the manager on duty right now? I just want to make sure you got like, no, you you raise people up the ranks, you find the best of the best, and then you put it in their hands and you trust that they're doing their job. That way, your oversight doesn't have to be micromanaging. He doesn't have to micromanage every department head of every movie that he's doing anymore. He and his level of um you know, uh, I don't even want to say scrutiny, his level of checking and making sure that things are going according to plan um, is is not on the micromanaging level anymore. So I, I think that he's put a lot of really good, really talented and smart people in positions where he trusts what they're doing. And they've done multiple, as, as you said, a lot of these movies are sequels like mm. Black Panther 2. Like he's not going to, he's going to take everything that didn't work about Black Panther 1, any one that was a problem, they're gone. And all the people that worked really well, they're sticking around. And so I, I think this is, I, I'm not worried about this at all. Guys, question here is, how do you feel about this news that Kevin Feige starting to dip his toes into some other water? He's going to be doing a Star Wars film, ladies and gentlemen. How are you feeling about that? What are some of the upsides? What are some of the downsides that you see? Jump on down to the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. And I'm sure we're going to have some more people wanting to talk about that as we get into the live questions. Speaking of which, guys.